when you acknowledge your weakness to your the rest of your team, mm -hmm. it's never news to them. It, it's not new information. <laughs> Delayed information. Yes, okay. <laughs> Moshe is this, Moshe is that. Everybody already knows that, so when you might as well just come out and say it and say, hey, you know, I'm not good at this counseling business, can you do this? I'm not good at running wires through the ceiling, Ted, can you do this? That's what Ted comes You know Ted, right? Even in New Zealand, they would Ted. I wrote Shem Yow. We cannot assume everybody hates to do, as I mentioned earlier, the things that we hate to do. Mm -hmm. Your weakness, write this down, your weakness is someone's opportunity. Amen. Your weakness is someone else's opportunity. So you're not good at finding getting yourself a better place to meet. Okay, I'll guarantee you there's a real estate agent or someone in your congregation who's pretty good on the phone. And maybe you don't like talking on the phones, maybe you're weak on the phones, weak so to speak. Find someone in your congregation that likes to schmooze on the phones. And let them call around until you find a better place or place Yahweh wants you to have. You don't have to get on the phone and do it yourself. Amen. Amen. Leadership is not always getting things done right. Very important misconception. You don't have to do things right. Sometimes there is no way to do things right. Not everything is Isaiah 9 6. Okay? What do you do when someone walks in the door, tells you he's a, that he is Abraham, <laughs> of, the, of the Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Right. And then you say, well, what is your last name? He says, Link. <laughs> what do you do when he starts going around to the rest of the people in your congregation saying that it's not Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? It's Abraham Lincoln, Isaac and Jacob, and he is Abraham Lincoln. Now what do you do? What, uh, what book, are we, what, what, what verse are we going to turn to? <laughs> you, you, you have to understand, oh man, that, that some things you're going to be unprepared for. Some things you're not going to be ready for. Leadership is not about getting everything right. Leadership is about getting things done through others. In the world, when we were in the Napoleon Hill thinking we were rich system, <laughs> all right, it's, it was known as opium. O P M, other people's money. All right, never spend your own, never use your own. Opium. Get some opium. Other people's money. Same in leadership. Same in ministry. It's not getting everything done right, it's getting things done through other people. You'll only go as far as your ministry team, as far as you'll go. They can talk all they want about Lone Ranger. You cannot do what we're doing and what Yahweh wants you to do without a team. You've got to have a team. Great leaders or successful leaders work through others work through others, who work through others. Leadership is about multiplying your efforts, not getting good at everything. Getting everything done right. Does that make sense? It's multiplying your efforts through others, which multiplies your results. Who told you, brothers and sisters? We, we cannot get things, well, you know, you know why Rabbi Rob has a great congregation? Because he's doing more things right than, than I am. That's, that's the enemy talk. You've got to multiply yourself. Not only you've got to do less. Now the world is doing more. Sure. That's the way you build a business. But great leaders have learned, good leaders have learned, you do less and multiply yourself through others. And you do not have to get things done right. Because sometimes there is no way to do it right. How, what's the right way to deal with Abraham Lincoln that walked into your congregation? What's the right way? 911, right? <laughs> but see, well, our mentality is we've got to call 911. No, you don't get someone else to call 911. Make sense? We don't have to do everything right. And I, and I got to be, I'm going to read this to you. This is going to, I'm going to give you a little zap, but that's okay. 
When a leader cannot find someone in their group, I'm assuming you have a group of two or three or more, to hand things to or delegate to, it's time for that leader to look in the mirror. When you've got a congregation of 20, 25 people, there are people there you can hand things off to. Mm -hmm. Easy. Mm -hmm. If you have a congregation of five, you can find people to hand things off to. People are exactly where we allow them to be. If we can't delegate, it's our fault. It's our fault. If we can't find someone to delegate, unless there's nobody in your group, that's understandable. If you're not a good administrator, don't administrate. If you're not a good counselor, don't counsel. If you're not a good teacher, let your wife teach. I don't know about that one. Or find someone else that can teach. I don't know about that one either. Because even an elder has to be apt to teach. So hey, I would even question your call to any ministry if you're not apt. Doesn't mean you have to be excellent, but apt. We're talking about ministry here, we're not talking about IBM, okay, or General Motors. What happened in the book of Maaseh Shlichim, Act 6? The Shlichim were waiting on tables, what were they doing? <coughs> Serving tables and distributing food, trying to give between the Hebraics, the Nazarenes, and the Hellenists. And they got so caught up, the Hebrews said, there's my not to those of and the Greeks said, they got the more than I do. <laughs> so instead of praying, fasting, preaching the word, they were cleaning and waiting on table. <laughs> when we started the ministry, Rifka used to come to me all the time and said, Moshe, no one made the coffee. I'm going to go make it. And guess what? We made the coffee. <laughs> oh, Moshe, the, the, they didn't erase the, the chalkboard. So when people in the congregation would group you and say, um, rabbi or pastor or leader, no one made the coffee. Good. Now, why are they telling you that? Because they expect you to make the coffee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You say, oh, that's a great idea. Why don't you make the pot? Amen. Rabbi, I've got this great idea that uh, we can advertise in the paper for the feast and get people to come and get people into the Moadim. And why don't, we, why don't we take an ad in the in the local paper? Oh, you know, my response would be, that's a great idea. Do you have the phone number? See, they want to come to you for you to do it, to give you more to do. <laughs> okay. So the Masesh Lichim delegated this responsibility, and what did they do? Taught and pray. Taught and pray. That's what they did. And what was the result? Masesh Lichim 6-7. Word of Yahweh spread and abounded and grew. Okay? I'm going to add stuff later as well, but I'm just using this for now. When the leaders decided to give up the responsibility of distributing food, what happened? New leaders surfaced, didn't they? Stephen and Philip. Stephen and Philip would never have surfaced if they had not been willing to give things up that they weren't called to do and they weren't good at doing. What would have happened if these leaders had continued to wait on tape? We have no Stephen and we have no, um, no Philip. True? True. Okay. A good messianic day. We would have a good messianic day. That's correct. Hashem <laughs> Brothers and sisters, if you're a leader, a cult be a leader, delegate your weakness. It is a myth of ministry. You've got to have everything right before you go in. Big mistake. Nothing will ever be right to go in. Now is the right time. Today is the day to start your fellowship. Amen. Next Shabbat is the day to have your first Shabbat meeting. There'll never be a right time. There'll never be a perfect time. Isn't that true? Uh, many of us believe, have believed that at times in the past. Yeah. That you're not qualified. That's true. Now, not, not, but I'm called. I'm not qualified, but I'm called. What do I do now? Hello? Here I am. 
I mean, I'm not really, I mean, I like children, I like holding babies, but I like giving them back. <laughs> so when my daughter, you know, I can barely deal with her. Now I come to the shul, and I've got like 10 children to deal with. What do I do? I stay away. I get out, I get, they stay out of my way, I stay out of their way. But I make sure they get taken care of. But I don't do that. You follow me? What needs to be delegated? What would it not be right for you to continue doing? A lot of stuff here. If you devote yourself, <coughs> a little of yourself, to everything, it means committing a great deal of yourself to nothing. If you're devoting yourself to everything in ministry, you are committing a great deal of yourself to nothing. Being busy, and we, we, we miss this a lot too, being busy doesn't mean you're productive. Confuse busyness with productivity. So trust me, the more time you spend on the porch, the more time your team knows your vision, has clear orders, the better because you can pray, you can relax. The better you if you're stressed out and anxious and all bent out of shape all the time. You can't play Ruach and Kodesh, you can't play Savior, but you can do a few things you're good at and do your Shabbat service. Or prepare the house for this Kadoshim. Maybe you're in a supporting role and your gift is to prepare, the gift of hospitality, then do it. Don't pick up a, a, the word and start teaching. Make sense? Yeah. The most productive leaders seem to have more, not less time than the average person. You ever hear that thing? Well, where's the leader? He's out on a yacht. Where's the dentist? He's on a golf course. <laughs> golf course? I've got internal bleeding and he's on the golf course. How do they get all this time to be on the golf course and play Pong the Pings and Ping the Pong? <laughs> because they've learned the successful leadership that busyness does not equal productivity. You understand what I'm saying? The reason you're busy is you're still folding your own newsletters. That's your fault. You've got 30 people in your congregation. Don't tell me someone can't do this. I'm sorry. I don't buy it. But you think that I, only I can do it right. It's a myth. I've got to do it right. Only I can get it done right. That's not leadership. Nope. Do you know a few people that can do this? I know more than that. <laughs> and say, well, if, but they won't do it. Fine. So it doesn't get done. It won't get done. That's another myth. Because we think it won't get done, but that's an opportunity for someone else to step in and do it. And it will be. If it's Yahweh's work, it'll get done. Yahweh's work done, Yahweh's way never lacks. Yahweh's provision. Never. That's right. Never. You know why I was broke? You know why I was a telemarketer? You know why Yahweh called me to full-time ministry and I couldn't get into full-time ministry? Because I was doing Yahweh's work, but I wasn't doing it Yahweh's way. I was a gold man, I was a lord man, I was a Marlboro man, and I was a Sunday keeper. As soon as I started using the true name in the two houses, I was skyrocketed right off of that um, Florida Space, Kennedy Space Center, <laughs> right into the promise of Yahweh. I knew I'd always be full-time full -time ministry, meaning he would supply all my needs so I can dedicate myself. I, I always had the promise, but I never had that launch. Amen. But when I started doing Yahweh's work, Yahweh's well with both houses in Israel, and a true name, that's when Yahweh released. It was a season. I mean, so do Yahweh's work, Yahweh's way, you'll never lack Yahweh's provision. The best leaders have more free time than those who are not successful leaders. You should be asking the people around you saying something like this. What are some of your skills that I need to know about that are not being used? Are you a good artist? There's, there's, there's a new logo for your ministry. There's your new station. What skills are you neglecting among the people that Yahweh has given? Say, hey, John, what's happening, man? And hey, what are you good at? What do you do Monday through Friday? Well, um, I'm a telemarketer. Really? Well, we're looking for we're looking for a way to get out of this church and get our own property. Here's here's the phone book. We'll make some calls. You, know, you understand? <laughs> Become familiar with the skills of the people that Yahweh has given you. Ask them. Say, what are you good at? What do you enjoy? Mm.
How many know that the people that Yahweh has given you for your home group, your fellowship, your congregation, are going to one day leave your congregation and your group and your fellowship? I mean, oh, yeah. So what you do is you build them up and release them for service. They're not going to stick around forever. Maybe 40 years, 60 years, but that's not forever, is it? So they're going to leave anyway. You might as well launch them and release them than lose them because they're not being productive. Some people, if they're not allowed to find their gifts and use their gifts, are going to leave out of frustration. They're going to leave anyway. So it's better to let, have them leave by launching them into ministry than just have them leave through what? Frustration. Some of our best assets are often in our midst. Okay? Helping those around you discover their competencies and positioning them accordingly ensures your, your ministry will perform at peak efficiency. There are people who love, remember we've talked about this before, who love what you hate. It's hard for us to fathom. How can anybody love serving food and cleaning tables in the key law? There are people like that. It's hard for us to fathom, right? Strengthen your team by fit, uh, setting them free to do only what they can do. It will ensure your success. Now I want to talk about challenges and courage. If we've been called to leadership, that's an if, leaders are fueled, they're motivated by progress. True? Progress. Nothing is more discouraging to a leader than no progress. Okay? You've got the same three people you had 20 years ago, you're in the same stupid apartment, nothing's changed. The only thing, even the sign on the door is the same. The always assembly of the uh, of the hopeful. 